So I was thinking, how, how do I want to show you guys my performance? And I thought that I was going to edit together like a cool little montage, a cool little video of how the decathlon went down. Um, and like all my events and that kind of stuff, but it really doesn't capture the, like the decathlon's not pretty. It's not a super glorifying event until the very end. So um, I'm gonna go along and I'm gonna show you an event, I'll break it up and I'll tell you what I thought of it, that kind of thing. Uh, the events that I'm not gonna show um, because I don't have video of them are the 100, the 400, and the 1500, I think are the only events that I don't have uh, footage of. Other than that, everything's there and I'll explain everything. So, this is my Pac-12 championship winning decathlon. It's my first Pac-12 championship I've ever won. I've placed second, I've placed third, and I've placed fourth. So, I've gotten literally first, second, third, and fourth in my four years of doing the decathlon at the Pac-12 championships. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this little thing I'm about to put together. I, I haven't even done it yet, and it's it's 1.30. Yeah. So that was my first jump in the long jump. Um, I think it was actually a foul, but it's the best looking video, so you guys get to see this one. Um, I ended up jumping only 7.06, which is far below my personal best, and far below what I'm capable of actually jumping. The crazy thing about this, so this is gonna be a little bit longer. The 100 was run. There was a kid that fall started, whatever, it didn't get called. Our coach protested because I didn't run the fastest so that we could rerun the race. We were told then, all right, we're gonna rerun this race. It's gonna be, I don't know. It was, it was really, really hectic. And then two coaches protested against the protest and so we didn't actually end up rerunning it. We took a really, really long time in between the 100 and the long jump. And I lost a lot of points in the 100 and I lost a lot of points in the long jump. Um, that kind of all played out to be okay in the end because I still won. But this was my first attempt long jump. It was by far my furthest, but it was a foul so it doesn't count. Um, the next one was an okay jump and the next one was the jump that I actually ended up recording at 7.06 or something like that, maybe even 7.03. Anyway, that's the long jump. It's getting better. I'm still a little long to the takeoff, uh, but it's, it's getting better. Um, if you watch right here, my... That's my mom yelling, by the way. But if I attack the board decent, but I get really long into the takeoff, and if you watch it, I'm counting on you guys to slow this down and go back through it, but if you watch it, I get really long and my foot kind of slides in there instead of putting it back underneath my hip. But in the air, it's not that bad. I never really jumped up. I kind of just jumped out the whole time, but it's okay. The next event is, of course, the shot put, and it's an event that I don't need you guys to coach me on. Sorry, I was checking the mic. I don't really need you guys to coach me on it, so if you're thinking about leaving a comment about the shot put, please refrain from leaving comments about the shot put. I know that there are a lot of things that I can do better in it. As of the last like three weeks, for some reason, I've just forgotten how to do something, and it's something we need to work on going into nationals, and it will get better, I promise you guys that. This was, I had probably the worst shot put series I have ever had in college, and I was not proud of it, and that's what you guys will see here. I only, I'm showing one throw because I was that disappointed in my throws. Those videos were the high jump, because of course, after the shot put comes the high jump. And I think that the two bars, the first one was 6-2 or somewhere around there, and the next one was 6-4, I think, or 6-3 and something, and 6-1 and something. Anyway, they weren't, it wasn't my best high jumping day, but it was, it was consistent, it was average. It wasn't bad, nor was it super good. So, 
it was one of it was probably actually my best event on day one. Oddly enough. Um yeah. I I, I kinda wanted to break down and talk about the events a little bit more, but I'd rather you guys just see the videos and then Maybe I'll talk about how I actually felt about the performance at the end of the video. Alright, so day two rolls around. Of course, the first event is the hurdles. We are running here, I'm in the fast heat, and it went okay. It's about my average hurdle race. 14.6, uh, 14.6.7 maybe is what I believe it was. Um, Tyler Brendel, the kid to my left in the blue from Cal, he raced very well and Isaiah Oliver raced pretty well. Um, Isaiah smacked the last hurdle, so did Tyler, I think. Let me see. Yep. Actually, yeah. Ah, Isaiah was clean. Tyler smacked the last hurdle and I smacked every hurdle. After the race, Tyler turns around and goes, "Are you? is your knee bleeding? And I said, nope, I smacked every hurdle with my lead leg, which is what I tend to do because when I try and run faster, I end up swinging it long, and then it just gets slower, and it's just, it's not a good thing, but it's something we can work on, and it's an easy fix. And I think that I can run very fast. Uh, Tyler ended up running like a PR 14.2 something. Good job, Tyler. I know you watched the video, so good job, Tyler. Proud of you, buddy. As you guys know, discus is not my strongest suit, but today, or that day, I actually ended up winning the discus competition. I can't tell you how, well, I know how Joe didn't throw as well as he probably should have or would wanted to. So I ended up winning the discus competition. I threw 37 meters, 99, which is 120 some feet, I think. And I was, I was very happy with it. Um, it was just under a PR, I think, and was by far the most consistent I have ever thrown discus. So all three of my throws were above 36 meters, and I don't know if I've ever even had that happen. They were all clean releases. Um, it wasn't the best conditions to throw discus in, usually you want a headwind and we were throwing with a tailwind. So if I would have had a headwind, um, I don't know, maybe one of them would have reached out to 39 meters, maybe even 40 meters. But this is one discus throw, I think it was my furthest throw, and I was very, very happy with it. Um, I know I clapped my hands because I was mad afterwards, but looking back on it, I did, I did really well in the discus. I was proud of myself. So that pole vault competition, um, I, my hands are actually sweaty watching it, and uh, it was kind of the turning point in the decathlon. So I won the discus, then we come over to pole vault, um, warm ups go pretty bad. I never really penetrate into the pit, I get stood up, stood up, stood up. We're dealing with a crosswind and slight tail um, almost the whole time, and if you've ever vaulted before, it's really, really hard to vault in a crosswind but we kind of got it done. Um, so not the very last make, but the two makes prior to that were third attempt clearances. Now I know that doesn't sound crazy, but in a decathlon, every single bar matters. And it's, it's really, really intense when it becomes a third attempt because you either make this bar or you're done and lose out on all those points. So I think my first bar was 4.30. I make that, no problem. Next bar, 440. 
I think that's a second or third attempt clearance there. Or 450, sorry, I passed 440, went to 450. Next bar, third attempt clearance at 460. Make it, everyone goes crazy. And then 470, I don't have any of my 480 jumps because they were bad. But next attempt, or next bar, 470. I blow through the first attempt, so I didn't include that. But, so I'm standing at the back of the runway, I have two poles. One's stiffer, one's softer. I'm holding the softer pole because I have a crosswind. I'm waiting for it to get to a tailwind. And my time, I have three minutes. So, I'm chilling back at the back of the runway. I've got my soft pole, or softer pole. I feel this huge tailwind start to come. I'm like, oh, okay, now I can get on my big pole. I grab the big pole, 15.5, or flex is 15.5. So I grab my big pole, I'm standing on the back of the runway. I'm about to go, and the wind switches again. I'm like, shoot. So I switch poles again. At this point, I'm sure my parents were freaking out. Everyone in the stands is like, what the heck is he doing? Um, yeah, my coach is probably ready to cry. And I run down the runway and plant the pole, get over it a second attempt. If you watch my coach, he's in the back in the yellow. He kind of just throws his hands up and is like, well, he made it. So I can't, I can't get mad at him because he did what he knew he was going to do, or I knew what I was going to do. And it actually, it turned out really well. I'm watching it right now. Um, it wasn't the cleanest of jumps. But we made it, made 470, and like I said, with the discus and the pole vault, that's where everything started to turn. I was in second place up until these events, and after the discus, I moved into first place. After the pole vault, I remained in first place with about a 100 point lead. If you have to ask what my favorite event is, it's the javelin. It is so much fun to throw, and like just watching this right now, I get I get juiced. I'm pumped. This is javelin. I could throw it all day. Blue skies. I'm just out there and I'm picking. It is so much fun. If my elbow could handle it, I'd probably just be a javelin thrower. But here's the thing. I have a 100 point lead. Um, the guy that's in second throws a lifetime best of 48 meters. Uh, the other two throws weren't his greatest. So first throw, 48 meters. Um, my first throw, which is the first throw you guys get to see, was 55 meters, which is about average. But the good thing was, to me, it felt like a crappy throw. So if I can throw 55 meters and have it feel crappy, I know it's gonna be a good day. Next throw, I get back there, I'm having fun. I juice one, goes out to 58. I'm pretty excited, like I'm, I'm pretty happy. Next throw, I'm standing at the back of the runway. I go to my approach. I, like, I, don't, I don't know if I draw it back on the wrong step or what, but it just doesn't feel right. So I stop, gather myself, go back to the back of the runway, and I get juiced, I get pumped. I know that this is gonna be a big throw. I start screaming, yelling. I hit this thing, oh man. I juice, I literally juice, I don't know if that's even a word, but I juice this thing. I get so into it, I don't know, it just it gives me chills, I was pumped. As soon as I let go of it, our throws coach was standing next to me, or not standing next to me, but standing next to the runway, and he goes, oh, Jamie! Jamie's my coach's name, and I knew at that moment that it was going to be a good one. If our throws coach says that I ripped one, then I ripped one. And just watching it, boom. I stand there, I look at it, 
I know it's good. I turn around, I'm clapping. And then I walk over and I give Joe this chest bump. Boom! I was pumped. It was sick. And then I go into the 1500, which I don't have video of because it's a long race and I'm not the best at it, so why would I want a video of it? But I go into the 1500 with a 306 point lead after that javelin. That javelin saved me. After the pole vault and the discus and the jav, I had a considerable lead. I kind of knew, not necessarily that I had it won, but that I could win. And at that point I was just, I was happy, I was focused though, because I knew that I still had to go out and run to win this Pac-12 championship. Honestly, I was more afraid of Joe than anybody, because um, he's a freak when it comes to the 15, and he ends up running 414, moves all the way from like fifth, I think, or fourth, whatever he was in, all the way up to second. I get first, Joe gets second, and it was just, it was awesome. Uh, unmatched by anything that I've done thus far to win a decathlon. It was great. So overall, I can't be mad about the decathlon because I won, so I'm not mad about the decathlon at all. I was very happy with how everything turned out. I thought I competed very well, and that's what it comes down to in most decathlons is just how you compete. It doesn't matter if you PR in every event or what. Something's going to happen, and you kind of got to get through it, and then you just got to compete. And that's what me and Joe both did. We weren't in the best situations, but we competed and got first and second, and it was awesome. But I couldn't have done this without a couple of special people. First, my mom and my dad. They're amazing. They come to every one of my meets, and I, I don't think that there are a better set of parents out there. Secondly, my sister. Uh, none of this footage or anything really would have come together without her being there. Um, she took a lot of this stuff and kind of gave it to me, but she never got a picture with me. And I feel horrible about that, so Callie, I'm sorry that I didn't get a picture with you. Hopefully I'll get a picture with you at NCAAs. Um, secondly, Lauren and Devin, they're awesome. Um, and then a huge part of that day was not only my best friend from high school came up, but the entire like a, a very, very large part of the University of Oregon's track team came up to support just me and Joe. And they got a bus, and they all came up, and they came up during pole vault, and they came up such a crucial time. Like pole vault, I don't know that I don't make those two third attempt clearances without them being there. I don't know that I'm standing at the back of the runway, have to reset my mind, and have to get juiced to try and throw that 60 meter throw without without them all being there. And so. With that, I, I just can't thank my support staff enough, the trainers, everybody enough. I know it kind of sounds like cocky, but I, I really, they thank you guys for everything that you guys do. Um, thank you for all my teammates that came up there and watched it and supported it. And I, I love you guys all. It was awesome for you guys to be up there and go through that with me and Joe. And I cannot thank you guys enough. Um, but this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I really didn't go super in depth with all of the events, but what are you going to do? Um, I'll show you guys some of the hardware that we won tomorrow. Uh, other than that, remember, be nice to people. Be nice to people. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt others. Slow down. Don't dance so fast. Go outside and enjoy this lovely weather before it's gone by the weekend. I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. Okay, bye. Be nice to people, don't drive too fast, don't dance too fast. Grip it and rip it. Grip it and rip it. Grip it and rip it. Congrats, Mitch. Congrats, buddy. Pac-12 champion. Do you have anything you want to say? See you, Cole. I love my girlfriend. She's the best. And Ooh. I won Pac-12s. Woo!